Many things can be said about the comparison between uh, Adobe Premiere and DaVinci Resolve. Maybe some believe one is better than the other, but when it comes to color grading, there is simply no comparison. Before we begin, just a quick note. Uh, our updated courses for DaVinci Resolve 19 will be released within the next two weeks. And of course, they're available to all Film Simplified users. As you know, uh, we offer lifetime access, so even if you joined our courses back in 2014, you'll still get the full update now. You'll receive an email message soon, letting you know that it has been released. It seems that there are some issues happening with Adobe these days regarding their terms of service, and as a result, a large number of filmmakers and content creators are switching to DaVinci Resolve. Now, I'm clearly biased. And I mentioned in a video like seven years ago that the issue was never Premiere, but rather Adobe. The goal here is to make the transition easier for filmmakers who are used to Premiere and want to move to Resolve. So this is the easiest crash course in the world. I promise you after these 15 minutes, you will learn the basics of the color page and how to use it. This is important because Resolve is fundamentally different from Premiere. Resolve uses nodes, which for many people switching from Premiere may seem daunting. They might ask what is a node and why should we use one? Resolve also has an entire page dedicated to color with many effects. So if you're switching from Premiere or even if you're just starting to use Resolve and finding the color grading process advanced, or if Resolve's approach seems unfamiliar, especially for Premiere Pro users, you'll enjoy this course. The Color tab. Let's start with a tour of the Color tab's interface. In the middle to the top here, we have the monitor. And to the right, this is the Nodes window. This is where we manage nodes. And to the bottom here, this is the Clips area. It displays thumbnails from all the clips in the timeline in the edit page. I'll click here to switch to the edit page. Note that we have multiple clips on the edit page's timeline. And if we switch back to the color page by clicking here, we have the thumbnails. So here, every thumbnail represents a clip from the edit tab's timeline. Note that all thumbnails are the same size, regardless of the length of the clip in the edit page. So again, let's click here to switch back to the edit page. Note that some clips are longer than other clips. However, in the color page, all clips are represented with the same size thumbnail, because here we're working with color, not with edit. So the length of the clip doesn't matter. What matters here is that we squeeze as many clips in the view as possible in order to be able to compare their colors. And these two windows at the bottom contain the color effects. Each window contains multiple effects that we can switch between using these icons on top of the windows. And it's the same also for the window on the left. Notice that if you're using a screen with lower resolution, then these two windows might be merged into a single window on the left side. This window will still contain all the effects from both windows. Everything still works the same. We simply have the two windows merged. Let's reset the view. If you find that you moved windows around, you need to reset the layout of the page. It's simple. Simply go to Workspace and select Reset UI Layout. Next, you can access scopes in Resolve by clicking this button here. And here we have the scopes. And you can switch between the different scopes available in Resolve using this drop-down menu. Now, let's take a look at one of the most important aspects of Resolve, nodes. So, this is the nodes window, and this is a node. What is a node? A node is simply a container of color effects. Currently, we only have one node, with no effects being applied to it. So, what's the purpose of this node? Simply, this node will remember all the effects and color controls we apply down here in all the windows. For example, let's change the color of the image using the color wheel. So for now, I'll simply add contrast, change the pivot, and make the image very orange. The colors don't look great, but this will make the color changes clear. Next, in curves, I will pull the gamma down. Now, all the changes we applied down here and here are saved in this node. This includes the changes to every single effect 
in all the windows. Now, let's add a new node. In order to add a new node, I can simply go to the color menu, go to nodes, and select add serial node. The standard node is called the serial node. So I'll add it and note that now we have a new node added. Now, let's take a look at how the image flows in the nodes window. I'll select these two nodes and drag them to the right in order to make things easier to understand. This point here represents the original image before any effects are applied to it. And this point represents the final output of our color grading. So whatever reaches this point will be the final image that is displayed on the monitor. So the effects from the first node will be applied to the original image first before the effects from the second node will be applied to the output coming from the first node. Then the second node will send the result to the output in order to be displayed on the monitor. So if I select the second node by simply clicking on it, notice that when I clicked on the node, an orange border appeared around the node, which means that now this is a selected node. So from this point, whatever effects I change here will be applied to the second node because this is the node that is currently being selected. Again, we know it's selected because it has the orange border around it. So now while the second node is selected, I'll control saturation in the image. I'll simply reduce saturation all the way. Notice now that the final image that is actually reaching the output and that is being displayed on the monitor is actually black and white. That's because we removed all the colors in the second node. So for example, let's add a new node. I'll go to color, nodes, and add a new serial node. And this is the new node that was just added. So now while the new node is selected, I'll add contrast to the image and change the offset a bit. So let's take a look at what's happening now. The first node applied certain effects to the image, and then the second node received the output from the first node and applied new effects on top of the output coming from the first node. And the third node added even more effects on top of all that. Using nodes offers many benefits. The most obvious one is that you can use all the effects here, so this entire panel, over and over again. Each new node you add provides you with an entire new panel of all the color effects. And if we needed to reset the effects on a certain node, I can simply right click on the node that I want to reset and simply click on reset node grade. And this will reset all the effects on this particular node. And if I needed to reset everything, so reset all the nodes and all the effects, I can simply right click on the nodes area and select reset all grades and nodes. And this will reset the entire node structure back to its original state. Next, let's take a look at the color wheels window. If you do not see the color wheels window in the bottom left, make sure that this icon is clicked and that the first option to the left here is activated. Note that within the color wheels window, we have multiple windows. However, the one we're interested in at the moment is the first one to the left, which is the main color wheels effect. Every color wheel contains two sections. First, the wheel itself controls the colors of the image, and the slider to the bottom controls the brightness of the image. So let's take a look at an example. Keep your eye on the image. If I click on the color wheel, so the point in the middle of the color wheel, and drag it towards red, notice that the colors of the image are becoming red. And if I drag the towards blue, note that the colors of the image are becoming more blue. And if I drag the brightness slider to the left, I'm making the image darker. And if I drag it to the right, I'm brightening the image. Note that I can click this button to reset all the effects in this window. Let's click it. So why do we have four color wheels? The first color wheel to the right controls the colors of the entire image. So the changes I make to this color wheel will affect all the objects in the image. However, the three color wheels to the left control different brightness ranges in the image. At first, this might seem a bit complex, but it's actually pretty simple. The first wheel to the left controls the colors and brightness of the dark objects in the image. So for example, if I bring the brightness of this color wheel down, I'm not bringing the brightness down in the entire image. I'm only reducing the brightness in the dark areas of the image. Note that the changes I made through this wheel did not affect the bright areas of the image. Then, the wheel to the right controls the color and brightness of the bright areas in the image. 
So if I drag this wheel towards yellow, for example, I'm changing the colors of the bright areas in the image without affecting the dark areas. And again, the same with brightness. If I change the brightness of this color wheel, I'm changing the brightness of the bright areas in the image without affecting the dark areas. And the wheel in the middle controls the rest of the image. Let's click this button one more time to reset everything. Next, we have extra controls to the top and bottom of the color wheels. In the top, I have controls like contrast, for example, which as the name implies, controls the contrast in the image. Next, we have the pivot control, which simply allows me to select where the contrast effect originates from. So in other words, does the contrast adjustment affect the highlights more or the shadows more? And to the bottom here, we have the saturation control, which controls the amount of color in the image. And to the top left here, we have the temperature and tint controllers. It's easy to understand what these controllers do by simply looking at the color representation at the bottom of each controller. So if I drag this controller to the right, I'm making the image more orange. And if I drag it to the left, I'm making the image more blue. And the same goes for the tint controller. Again, let's click here to reset. We have these two icons at the top of the lift and gain wheels. These icons allow us to add advanced color correction effects with a simple click of a button. In order to better understand what these controllers do, I'll switch to this image. Notice that some objects in the image should actually appear pure black. For example, certain parts in the background here should appear as pure black but currently they look more gray. That's because of the recording format that was used in the camera. And other objects should appear as pure white, like these areas outside the window, but they're not. Again, this is due to the color setting that was used in the camera. So in order to correct this image, I can simply guide resolve to these two objects and Resolve will automatically perform all the necessary changes in order to correct the colors of this image. Let's take a look at an example. I'll first click on the icon on top of the left controller. Notice that it has a black dot on the bottom right. This means that this controller here will correct the dark areas of the image. So I'll click on this controller and I'll simply click on an object that should appear to be pure black in this image. So like this part here. And notice that Resolve now performed all the necessary changes in order to make this part appear pure black. And next, I will click on this icon on top of the gain controller. Notice that this time it has a white dot, so it will correct the bright areas of the image. So I'll click it, and I'll guide it towards an object in the image that should be pure white. For example, this part here. I'll click, and notice that Resolve again corrected this part and made it appear pure white. And notice that we corrected the image with two simple clicks, but the image still needs some work. So now, in order not to affect the current changes, I will continue working on the image in a new node so that we preserve the changes that were made to this node. So again, I'll go to color and click on add a serial node. And Resolve just added a new node and note that it's selected automatically. It already has the orange border around it. Notice that the image still looks a bit green. So now I need to correct the image for the green cast. Note that the green cast in the image is not in the highlight nor in the shadows because we just corrected both in the first node. Remember when we discussed earlier that the gain and lift wheels control the highlights and shadows of the image, while the gamma controller controls the rest of the image. This means that the green cast that we have is actually in the gamma area because it's not in the highlights nor in the shadows, because again, we corrected them a bit earlier. So now, in order to correct for the green cast using the gamma wheel, I will simply click on the point in the middle and drag the controller away from green and take a look at the image. We just removed the green cast. So look at the image before and after, before, after. Next, we need to brighten the image a bit. So in order to brighten the image without affecting the highlights or shadows, again, we need to use the gamma controller. So in order to brighten the gamma areas a bit, I'll click on the brightness controller in gamma and drag it to the right slightly, brightening the image. Finally, notice that the image lacks color. 
So we're going to have to increase saturation, or in other words, the amount of color in the image. So using the saturation controller, notice that we're increasing the colors in the image. Actually, we overdid the green controller, so I'm going to dial that back a bit. Yeah, much better. Now, if I want to see the original colors of the image before any of the changes that I made, I can click on this button on top of the monitor in order to see the original colors of the image before any changes. So these are the original colors of the image. If I click this button again, now this is the image after all the changes we made. It doesn't look great, but we had to push it a bit further in order to make the changes clear. Finally, in order to stylize the image a bit, again, I will add a new node. So color, nodes, add a serial node. And now in the new node, I'll drag the controller slightly towards yellow slightly towards blue and this will stylize the image a bit take a look at the colors before the last node and after and these were the absolute basics of the color tab in resolve i hope this was helpful if you found it useful please visit us at filmsimplified.com to join the rest of the course uh, it's free of course where we also simplify other aspects and pages of resolve thank you filmsimplified.com